Hello and welcome back to Nuremberg and our Arm Tech Talks live from Embedded World 2024. I'm your host, Tobias McBride, and all week, together with some of our incredible Arm partners, we're bringing you a glimpse at some of the groundbreaking Arm innovations at this show. This Arm Tech Talk series is the place for you to discover the latest from the Arm ecosystem. So welcome, welcome back if you've been watching our series so far, and thanks so much for joining us. This week, we've had tons of great automotive innovation, and we continue that theme today as I'm thrilled to be at NXP's booth and to be joined by Brian Carson welcome. from NXP. Hey, welcome. Tobias, welcome to the NXP booth. It's so cool. Great to have you here. A lot of great stuff going on here. So tell us a bit more about yourself, and then sure. we're going to talk a lot about your stuff and your work in automotive. Yeah, so um, Brian Carlson, I am the global marketing director for automotive processors here at NXP. It's an exciting place to be in automotive, and I get to be at the heart of all that. We'll show you a little bit about that today. Yeah, we've got some really exciting demos behind us, which we'll get to in just a minute. Yeah. But before we do, let's talk a bit more about the long-running ARM NXP partnership a bit more. And there's been some really exciting recent yeah. announcements you made. Um, and I'd love for you to talk a bit more as part of those as to why you've been using ARM technology. Yeah, so back in uh, 2017, we announced that we we're converting all of our Lime from top to bottom, from end node to zone, all the way to central compute across the board, all of our devices are ARM-based. And there's several reasons. A big part of it's the ecosystem, uh, the ability to have commonality of software, commonality, commonality of our tools, and really bringing it from low end to high end and having a whole continuum, continuum of hardware software and compatibility customers really like that they wanted that so absolutely now it's really great to see you do this so and we're talking a lot about the s32 n55 right. you announced recently and you've got some great demos here so let's not just talk about them yeah I'll let's show. see them in action so today that i'm going to switch to handheld and i'd love for you to show us the demo yeah definitely today. let's okay. do it we'll cool. get the other camera let's we'll, get the other camera up and let's go through the demos. So talk Excellent. us through. So we're going to start at this end, right? Yeah. So let's. If you could go around this way, of probably course. better. So we're really here showcasing. Actually, we uh, announced our latest processor family called the S32N uh, here Tuesday. We announced it here uh, based on ARM technology, ARM Cortex R52s. There's 16 of those cores in here at 1.2 gigahertz in this chip right here. Uh, it also has dual, uh, two dual core Cortex M7s for communications and for system management. It's really a powerhouse. So this is the heart of our system. We announced the S32 Core Ride platform, which is the whole end-to-end -end platform for software-defined vehicles from end nodes, like actuations and sensors with S32K using S32, or using the uh, Cortex M4s to the zones with the S32K3s using the uh, ARM Cortex M7s uh, all the way to Central Compute with the new part, which has the S3, the uh, Cortex R52s. Uh, we also announced the family uh, at a high level. This will also have versions that will include Cortex A cores also. Those will be future announced specifics. We started with this device, which is really focused on real-time control. And the cold goal of this, we call it a vehicle super integration processor. Because what we're doing is actually today in a vehicle, you have 50 boxes, 100 boxes, 150 boxes ECUs that have a microcontroller or processor in them. And so instead of just putting a processor in a box, what we're doing in this chip is taking dozens of boxes and putting them in our chips. So it's kind of flipping it on end. So it's really about super integration, real-time focus. Uh, and what we're actually showing here, this is a great example of how we can do that. We can. We have those 16 cores, they're all configurable. You can have lock, each one of those can be lockstep. So for, for safety critical, chassis, propulsion, safety, lockstep. We can have single core for non-safety applications like HVAC, body, uh, OTA, et cetera. And then there's other applications that may want more processing, more capabilities or symmetric multi-processing to multiple cores together. The key here is that we have all these cores and you can dynamically at boot time configure it what cores do I need, what uh, memory they need, what IOs they need, what peripherals they need, and we can lock them down in hardware. We call it software-defined hardware enforced. And this is really unique in the industry to be able to basically take those boxes and replicate boxes within a chip because now they're fully, instead of physically isolated, they're physically isolated, not in a box, but inside the chip. That's the key premise of all this. It's gonna to be, to be able to make the integration for automakers streamline. And that's the whole purpose as we go through uh, the Core Ride platform. The big, big challenge, we heard this all week from analysts and other people, 
uh, and from OEMs, their biggest challenge is the complexity and the consolidation and integration challenges. So together with ARM and our partners and the technology and leveraging that together as a collaboration, we're able to streamline that hardware, software, and pre-integration of software with our, with our partners, which are ARM partners also, to be able to, to streamline that whole process for our customers. And that's critical for success for SDV. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But you're not just showing this off, right? You've also got some really exciting work with NXP Cloud Studio yeah. as well, which is right behind you. So yeah. this is really, really great to see. Is there anything else you want to highlight as well, part of these demos? Well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. I didn't want to just move over really. I want to at least say the other part about this, and I'll just briefly show this. Of course. Um, on the demo, we're showing uh, various types of use cases of how this technology can provide value not only to the OEM, because what we're doing here is, can you imagine if we're reducing 20 or 30 or 40 boxes? Think about the weight, the mm. cost, the sustainability issue, all the wires. That's helping the OEM. Now, how does this help the actual end customer, the consumer, right? right. So we have things like personalization. We go deep within the vehicle so I could purchase this personalization package. And this could be all kinds of uh, interesting functions. But this is what's really cool about it is I have two different fobs. Driver one, driver two. An example, I'll put driver one down on there. Everything turned yellow, the ambient yes. lighting, right? <laughs> the wheels are going faster, the lights are brighter. And you can see, this is what's the beauty of it with the, the technology between the ARM cores and our isolation technology. We can update very deeply throughout the vehicle. Anything feature could be personalized. So think about the driving experience, the in-cabin experience, the energy management. And in this case, the important point is this is a sport driver. Okay, note his range, 140 kilometer range left, and everything's aggressive, moving faster. Now, if I wanted to, another driver comes into the car, uh, everything turns green, right? And this is the value of SDV and the technology and the isolation. Everything's green. All of these were updated. The energy management was updated. This is the eco driver. And if you look up here, the range is now 170 kilometers because now it's a more eco friendly, not as aggressive. The wheels are going slower and the lights are dim. And uh, it, it basically is just a high level view. One other thing's really critical though for this whole thing is safe fault recovery. And this is really critical when we leverage the R52s and we isolate, we're able to eject the fault. So if, the question we always get when you're putting all these into a box, what if one goes down? Is that gonna yeah. take my whole vehicle down? And that's an important point. So let me eject a fault. I'm gonna eject a fault into the HVAC system, the air conditioning system. You can see that that went red, the fan actually stopped and it shows up on the infotainment uh, display, the climate control error. Well, we, we, we have the ability to clear that. We can run and update. There's some new software. There was, a, there was some kind of bug in that software that was downloaded. We can update that. Everything is fixed. And you notice that one, that one part, that uh, Cortex R52 is running. It was updated. It fixed it. The fan's running. Air is clear. The key message there is that every function is totally independent freedom from interference and they can be updated reset all that totally independently it's just awesome yeah, yeah so really i just want to, to highlight that value and there's a lot of others with the cloud and data but the purpose of this is to show that the the, the, the um, consolidation all the consolidation super integration the use cases and the use of arm technology from m cores to r cores and then a cores also coming in here Awesome. Also, yeah. as you say, it's great to see that personalization feature, the safety aspects as well coming across. Super interesting. I love demos. I love interactive demos. Yes. Work flawlessly as to expect. Yeah. And we're on a live stream, right? We exactly. say it's super exciting. So already, what should we talk about next? Yeah, so <laughs> I always say there's two sides to the SDB coin, right? We show the hardware, we show the architecture of zones and, and this, we show the use cases and, the, and that experience. But how do you create software, right? Yep. Create software is the other big challenge for uh, the, uh, the automakers because it's a whole new way of developing software. You know, think about, I have multiple things going on at the same time. It's not just a developer or a team of people working on a powertrain controller or doing a window lift controller, right? How do you all work together? So this requires collaboration. It requires the ability to work together and to be able with a SDB, it's all about updating that vehicle continuously over time. It gets better. It's driven by data insights. You understand if there's corner cases that maybe we can do better, we can find instances of how we can improve efficiency. We can improve the range of the EV over time. We can improve safety, security, new functions. So this is what we're previewing the NXP Cloud Studio. What that does is bring all the tools, virtual development tools, the deployment tools, and the monitoring real-time of vehicles all into one place. 
and that, that gives us what we need. So it's a virtual development environment for the whole software uh, life cycle. So the key thing here, when, it, when you have an SDV, it totally changes the development process. It's a continuous loop, right? Continuous yep. uh, integration, continuous deployment. And that's why we show this infinity loop, right? We code, we go through step one of code, we build, we test, we deploy, and then we have to monitor the vehicle and then go back to that whole process again and continually improve. So I'll very quickly just step through each one. We have the configuration. I'm not going to go through this much, but I can request the configuration. We're on AWS. We're running a virtual uh, private cloud in their AMIs, the Amazon machine image. So we can actually deploy and configure the machines, what cores we want to run on. We could use the ARM cores. We could use any cores within there, but we can run on ARM cores in the cloud. Uh, the code, so we have our SA2 Design Studio, which is our IDE and all our software tools and debugging. It also supports a lot of third parties with debugging tools. You know, that's all in the cloud. It's all virtual. Um, we can build it within there also. I'm not going to go through all the steps. Each one of these goes very deep. You can go through the Absolutely. whole process. Uh, we test it. So the test is really, really important here. This is where we use virtual models or digital twins. So we have the S32 N55 here. It's actually in the cloud leveraging Synopsis Virtualizer Development Kit, VDK, but it's based on ARM fast models. So the ARM fast models are running in the cloud. I can go through there, uh, run it. I can do everything I would do normally within the system. Once that all checks out, uh, and like I said, it goes very deep into it. We won't go through all that. I can go into the actual deployment stage. So that's the over there update. So everything's tested. It works virtually in the cloud. I want to deploy it. I can go through and do my deployment. It goes down to the vehicle and then and it runs. We can actually monitor this. This is this is that same board over there. That's the S32 N55. It's actually running. What we actually are showing here is real time. And we're, we're pumping data through this that we captured uh, on the M City uh, track in, in Detroit. Uh, this is actually data where you can monitor location on the track. You can monitor uh, the speed, the motor torque, all the battery current, everything that's going to the car. That's the beauty of an STV is you have deep access, not only to update, like we showed on personalization, but you have deep access to data throughout the car. And you can do that intelligently, display it. So you can imagine you have developers that are in this infinite loop, right? They, they're monitoring it, they find issues or they find optimizations. Then they go back through that loop, they update it and they improve it over time. So your car gets better over time. And this gives you kind of a look behind the scenes yeah. of how the software developers would do that and deploy it. Absolutely. Yeah. As you say, with the software defined there, we'll talk a bit more about it in a second. It's really interesting, okay. not just the hardware aspect to it, right. but also that software developer and angle. The cloud Super comes cool. in. The cloud it is all so has important. to work together. It does, it does. And we're going to talk a little about that and a lot more about Sophie. Anything else about the demo before we no, talk I about that? No, I think that's that? a good Because these level. are awesome. Yeah. I love the detail. Anyway, I mean, thank you. Definitely. We go deep dive. I yeah. have engineers that can go deep, deep, deep in the guts of all this, but we wanted to give you a good high level overview of yeah. what's going on. And this was awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Brian. Sure. Let's go back and have a catch up all then right. on uh, on Sophie, on SDV okay. as a whole, and uh, and a lot more besides, because that's been awesome. To do that, I'm going to switch back to our... Uh, to there we go. And we're back on. So. Um, in fact, let's go back to back to our original positions. Yeah. Um, so, really exciting to see how you're using ARM technology here across this incredible software development, uh, yeah. sorry, software defined vehicle effort that you've got here. And talking about ARM in the cloud to edge story, how do you use that? Is there anything else you want to add in terms of the NXP cloud, that cloud to edge story, and how it's really accelerating time to market for your customers? No, it's really critical to have all these pieces that I showed, not just the hardware, but the software that sits on top, the ARM ecosystem. Again, part of the reason ARM provided a lot of value for us is that ecosystem that we can pull through, yeah. right? So working with all those ARM partners, and we'll talk, I think, more about Sophie. Yeah, yeah. Sophie's another example of how we can leverage all those things or all the goodness we're doing, both in hardware and software, and then take it to the next level and kind of these blueprints and, and, and things within Sophie which allows the whole industry to take advantage of all this collaboration and technology really fusing together. Right? Yeah, and Sophie, as you say, uh, we can't talk about software defined vehicle without talking about Sophie. Yeah. And you guys are a member. Yeah. We're super excited to have you guys collaborating with us. And we have the great Sophie Social on Monday as well. Yeah, we had fun there. And great fun as well. Great to see everyone in person. Exactly, yeah. we'll make that a regular thing, I'm sure. What excites you about where Sophie is headed? 
Yeah, I think, you know, I was just looking at some of the list of the projects that we're involved in and how NXP has been involved with the ARM ecosystem. And there's at least six projects that come to mind. I'll touch on a few of them. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a whole, you know, you want to use the, uh, the, the, the cloud-enabled technology and bring that into automotive and how you deploy, kind of like we're showing here. How do I deploy to the vehicle and uh, how do I um, orchestrate all that within the vehicle? We've been heavily involved with that because our parts support application processing, within a uh, POSIX, Linux, or other type of environment on an A core, and we have M cores and R core. So we're like the, a great platform for Sophie to be able to innovate within with the, with the partners. So one of them is that kind of orchestration deployment mm. and uh, the AWOL, we support that with our S32G. We work with uh, the Conti platform, uh, with their uh, Kedge platform, their high performance compute with S32G mm -hmm. on it. Uh, we've worked uh, also with AutoWare, the, the AutoWare. Open ADK. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really, this is like the other end of the spectrum. So we have the G in the applications, but the, this is on the S32Z. Right. Uh, and our green box supports real-time safety, much like what we show with the S32N. S32Z is more for zones and domains, but we're able to, to report Zephyr on, onto that, specifically right. to support the SOFI effort. And so we're doing safety processing to support uh, autonomous drive applications within that uh, blueprint. It's really awesome. Yeah, and there's yeah, this... other things going on too uh, with Sonatus, uh, yes, with, with yeah. Electrobit, um, with a few others. And we work heavily with uh, uh, AWS. So we were lead platform working with AWS on the iceberg. And that was brought in as a as part of the blueprints too. So I would say we're kind of the common denominator besides ARM. Like ARM yeah, is yeah. the core technology and then we're the next layer on top. And then we are enabling all the uh, SOFI ecosystem to really innovate and take advantage of all that fundamental enablement that we put in place. It's so, really yeah. exciting to see all these blueprints coming. I can't wait to see even more of them I can't generated. keep track of them all. I, know. I was a little afraid I was going to stumble <laughs> on some of this, but there's a lot, and I can't I can't remember off the top of my head all the stuff, but quite a lot of uh, efforts within Sophie are leveraging our platforms that are yeah. optimized, really designed for STDs. Absolutely, yeah. and it wasn't just the case here. It's the case at CES as well a few months ago. Yes. That was the case. As you wander around, you saw a lot of your great, the gold box everywhere. Gold you box, saw, yeah, yeah. I did a post oh. just on that on LinkedIn. Is I walked around the CS floor and took pictures of all the gold boxes. There's several here, too, at this show. Yeah. But it's kind of be become the gold standard. <laughs> the gold standard of STV development. And it makes it really easy for people to develop uh, these STV applications. It's a great platform for Sophie integration also. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, as we look ahead, right, and the for the ARM NXP collaboration we yeah. mentioned, and we've talked a bit about Sophie already and so much more, this ARM NXP collaboration, what excites you the most about where the future of that's going? Yeah, I think we're just touching uh, the surface, right? It's, it's like we said about icebergs, just, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Literally, that's what's happening here. I mean, STV is going to evolve. You know, we uh, we uh, announced our S32 N55. Yeah. It's just the first member, but now we're adding a lot more into that uh, in subsequent. The thing about STVs is globally, I would say every OEM is taking different approaches, right? And, you know, they may put more in zones. They may put more in central compute. They may do some in the uh, infotainment area. And it's all about partitioning. Where do I put my, my software? Yeah. So I think there's going to be lots of opportunities for all of us because, as things shift from M to R to A, uh, workloads move around. And this is where Sophie and orchestration and workloads, that's an interesting area. So between the differences in architectures, between all these OEMs, it's going to give us a lot of interesting opportunities ahead and see how it all, how we can help shape that. Yeah. And with our core ride, you know, S32 core yeah. ride, I think it's going to be fundamental on our side to help bring that together because the hardware, software, and the ecosystem Come, to, come together where we pre-integrate, we work with the tier ones, we work with uh, the ecosystem partners to bring real so enablement solutions that are isolated that they can just start developing applications. So the work of Sophie yeah. and ARM to really put infrastructure and middleware and mechanisms and APIs to be able to make this happen and layer all that on top, I think it has tremendous value for the whole industry, right? SDV is not gonna be successful without collaboration Absolutely. and without people like what we're doing here with our, our SA2 core ride to you know, do more of that groundwork so the tier ones and the OEMs can innovate on top of all of it. And Absolutely. Yeah, it's a collaborative effort. Absolutely, it's really yeah. exciting to see where the future of this is going. I yeah. cannot wait. And we're already seeing some great examples Remember. now. Who knows where it goes in the future. Exactly. Brian, thank you so much. Absolutely pleasure to host yeah. you for Architect Tool today. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, definitely there's an interest follow up with us. Uh, there's a lot yeah. going on. Uh, look at look in the link for XP, my Brian Carlson on LinkedIn. I post a lot of stuff up there. 
Uh, we're posting a lot of blogs also on our site. So under our NXP community on the S32 uh, N55, every day we're posting new information. Our partners also have, uh, I think we'll have more with ARM coming also. Synopsis, I think yesterday, other partners. So there's a lot of activity with the ARM ecosystem all around around this part right now and uh, really look is. for the future announcements there's a lot to come there's a lot to Tip come of the thank you. <laughs> absolutely yeah. thank you so much well thank you so much for joining us that concludes another arm tech talk live from embedded world here in nuremberg and we've been discovering the latest innovations as i say at the show all based on arm so subscribe to the arm youtube channel so you don't miss any of our content we've got one final tech talk coming up this afternoon so do check that out as well thank you so much yes, again Brian. absolute Appreciate pleasure it. audience we'll see you again for another arm tech talk as we continue to discover how the future really is being built on arm here in Nuremberg at Embedded World 2024. See you soon. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Goodbye.